from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. Hello, everybody. Happy Saturday to you. And if you're on the other side of the planet, happy Sunday to you. It's Jeff Mara Podcast, Saturday night, and we've got three guests scheduled tonight. And let me make sure that it's up and running on my end so I can catch the chat, so I can get your questions for the guests tonight. So give me one moment here as I'm looking for that. And while I'm talking about that, in the description below will be a link to, in the description below will be a, um, there'll be a link to our Facebook page. There'll be a link to our uh, my personal Facebook page as well. Okay, it's almost up and running. There we go. My first, my personal Facebook page, there'll be, um, as I said, my main Facebook page. You'll see that my last name is Reynolds. Mara is my beloved wife. So um, you're welcome to friend me there. There's also a link to our other YouTube channels. There's uh, talks about our Discord is there among other things. Let's see what else is there. Um, hmm. uh, that's about it. And our merch store and our website. So those are the things there. And um, I think we're about ready to start. I need to get one thing out of the way, which is Mika's bed. See, Mika's bed's right there in front of the green screen. And where is Mika? She's not, she's gotta be around here somewhere. She'll eventually come in. I better leave the door open because she'll start maybe scratching the door. Okay, so give me one second. Mm -hmm. So Mika, I'm pretty sure, is in here. But my wife wanted to go find her to make sure she's not outside. There we go. Uh-oh. All right, so if I turn on my green screen, you know, the green screen, well, actually, it's called Chroma King. So there's a little video lesson for you. It's called Chroma King, and it either picks up like one major color. And since I'm closer than the green screen, when I turn it on and off, it automatically chooses my shirt. And then it turns my shirt into the stars, and then the green screen into the green. It's still green. So that's what's going on with that. But if you give me one moment here, oops, wrong music, put on a little music. We're gonna be bringing Christy in in just a second. That's our first guest. And let me tell you about her before I bring her in. Let me pull up my notes. Turn that down a little bit. Let me see, where is where are my notes? Here we go. So Christy has been on before. She's been a previous guest. She's podcast number 1029. The link to that original video is also in the description below. And she had an NDE and she saw beings that she knew and that some that she didn't. And she also um, talked about heart coherence a little bit, I believe, but she's here tonight to teach us about having heart coherence. And if you watch Joe Dispenza's stuff, I think what that is is kind of like getting your heart linked in with your brain and then them at the same frequency. But I could be wrong on that, so we'll have to get her definition of that. Be after her... Just to let you guys know, I'm going to have George Luisi on, and I believe he's had some out-of-body experiences and some pre-birth memories. And then after that will be a guest named Andy. And Andy was on a while ago. And um, what Andy was on before is that he has been under 
contact with ETs. And during his contact, he says that all channelers are, um, they're all being channeled by one person. All right, there's so many hiccups tonight. Sorry about that, guys. But we will get started here properly. All right, so let's go ahead and bring Christy in, okay? Let me find her here. Christy, are you there? I am here. Are you with me? I keep I keep getting stuff. I'm just troubleshooting and doing things here, and finally I'm settled yeah, you're in. Fine. It's a you're fine. I, it's a live show, and a live show is different than pre-recorded. That's why pre-recorded is much better because you can edit all those little things out in the beginning. Let me turn this off on this side. Okay. Yeah. All right. So. Oh, perfect. Uh, what I need to I was trying to explain to people, and I don't even know if I had it right. And first of all. Can you tell everybody what is heart coherence in the first place? Yeah, heart coherence is bringing your heart coherent to your brain. Mm -hmm. That is part of what we're doing. Um, in the physical, right, your heart's your physical heart, and it does all the functions it does. In the metaphysical or in another aspect of it, it's kind of like the pineal gland. It's a gland that's in there that has a purpose. But there's also outer reaching purposes, right? So your heart has the same kind of idea. There's a space within the area of your physical heart that you can get into that will allow you to go out and move about the, the stars freely. You can, you can get going in, you can get out, basically, is how I describe it. But when you do it, when you get coherent, your brain will um, have a level of frequency or coherency, however you want to word it, with your heart, your heart basically sends out a 0.1 hertz signal to your brain and tells your brain to send out chemicals and hormones that will heal your body, first of all. And when these are coherent, when your heart and your brain are in alignment with each other, um, it's pretty magical what you can do. No matter what's going on around you, you can achieve a level of peace that nobody can shake. If you go in there far enough, and Joe Dispenza plays with this kind of idea a lot. I heard you mention his name earlier. Um, Greg Braden, same idea. If you go through your heart, go into your heart and keep going, um, you'll, what I call, find your spirit. You'll come in contact with your, your isness or your beingness, your higher self, your God, whatever you want to call it. And in that contact, you have um, I don't know, higher intuition abilities that you know we talk about that are hard to achieve, supposedly. It's easier to get there when you know what the inner function of yourself is. What kind of results have you had personally once you figured this out and started doing it? Um, when I first learned this, it was through um, an entity that kept coming to me because I was super pissed off about my life and the things that had happened. And basically, I kept yelling at Jesus is what I was doing. And um, in that, an angel showed up and said, let me just show you how this works. Let me show you an easier way to do it. And it's before I knew about heart math or knew about Greg Braden or Joe Dispenza, any of those guys. I'd never, never read any of their stuff. And after that, I, I read everything I could get my hands on. Um, but basically what I was shown was that the way your heart connects to your brain, when you light these two up and you get them into total alignment, 
you achieve a higher level of consciousness, you achieve a higher state of being, even in this plane. Um, if you understand that there's only two things, right? There's matter and there's the thing that animates matter. That's the thing that animates matter. And if you can become more of that and less of the program, what can you do? Right? So that's always the question of what can you do once you get to that space? So will you be, as you're teaching this tonight, should we all be trying to achieve this? Like, are you going to guide us through this, do a meditation or, or how, how should we do this? It's kind of um, a guided visualization, different than a meditation, um, but you can get to a very high level of meditation through this. Um, so we're going to we're going to go there and right. kind of move around and see if we can get into the heart. Once we're there, I'm going to actually, um, I want to teach you how to use it to release subconscious programming. Mm, awesome. Right. So we'll use some of the more higher um, density things like anger and fear, because everybody struggles with that somewhere. So we'll use those as examples and see what we can move. All right. I know this is obvious to everybody, but once while we're going through this guided visualization if you're driving don't do it while you're driving if you're operating heavy machinery don't do it as well wait till you are in a safe place and you can come home and do it and just turn the video back on again and then try it right I think that would be a smart idea. Once you get there um, what we are going to practice we're going to go through the whole thing from heart coherence to opening our eyes and retaining it right into ladder of awareness, which is how you move the chemicals around and help relieve some of the suffering of, of our, our programmed nature. Um, and in doing all of that, right, as we roll through it, the whole goal is to keep your eyes open and stay there. And then you can drive and then you can Right. Live your life in that state instead of going back and forth, which is what people usually do with meditation. We sit down and meditate and we get into this great juicy place and it feels amazing. And then you open your eyes and you turn back into yourself. Right. You go back into the fight and the struggle. If you open your eyes and retain your peace. Who are you? What are you? Right. If you can retain your joy, if you can retain that that uh, unconscious, uh, unconscious, what is the word for? Unconditional love, right? And what we're going to try and recognize in this as we're moving through it is that it's not something that you do. It is something that was my timer going off with this. Um, it's not something that you do. It's something that you are. So you have to become the peace. You have to become the joy. You have to become the unconditional love. And it's a state of spirit. It's not an emotion. It's not an emotion that we've been taught on this planet. So once we find it, once you feel it, it's up to you to hold on to it and learn it and to understand it about yourself. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And what I want to ask one more thing before we get started is, what is the sign that we've got them and, you know, it, we've got the we've they're converged you know what i mean is there a certain sign or a certain feeling or how will we know it's working you'll know it's there when you feel it and i tell everybody the same thing the test is always the same the litmus test right it's always the same step out into tomorrow and see what's different get into the state right get into a coherent state maintain it go walk around don't let it go and just notice what changes around you because it's the internal aspect of you that creates everything in the outer world, yes? That's how they tell us this works, is by how you think and how you feel, you create everything around you. If you were all of a sudden peace that passes all understanding, and that's something that you are, not something that you do, what happens to the world around you, right? If I am joy, and joy is just constantly emitting from me, what happens around me? What happens to my life, right? If I'm unconditional love and 
don't get me wrong, I have not mastered any of these but peace. Peace is my peace is my place. I love being in peace. But when I'm there, I'm unshakable. You can't touch this. You know, my son gets mad, my husband has an issue, somebody else has got a problem, and I'm just like, I'm doing MC Hammer dance, can't touch this. <laughs> That's great. Well, I'm curious to find out what it's, I'm real curious to find out what it's like because sometimes I get into a meditative state where I feel like I'm super, you know, I don't know, I'm, I don't know, it's just I'm super at peace and my body's super at peace. I don't know if that's the same thing or not. So like I said, I'm real it curious. It very well could be. So then the goal is to, to get to know it as your personal self. It's not, it's not a place you went. It's something you are. You just walked into your spirit. You just didn't recognize it was your spirit. And the question is, can you start operating and functioning from that place instead of from, from what we've been programmed in our brains? Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Well, you and, ready to get started? Are you ready I, to get started? I am. Are you? Oh, yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put you in center stage. I'm going to stop my video and we're just going to only see you. Okay. Okay, that sounds fine. And I'm just going to tell everybody in the chat, if you have a question or something comes up, feel free to ask and we'll try and catch that as we go through or maybe catch it after. I was going to say, I think it'd be best if we just hold your questions till the end because no point in interrupting this visualization. I want you to talk while you're doing it. If you can grasp it, if you can get there and open your mouth and talk, it seals it in deeper, right? We're retraining the neuroplastic at that point. And that's what we want to do is retrain the neuroplastic. Okay. All right. Are All right. you ready? We're ready. All right. So what we're going to do, heart coherence, basically, the really super easy um, gist of it is three breaths and three minutes. So the breath work is literally a big inhale and then a nice, long, deep, slow exhale. The exhales are a little bit longer than your inhales. In this instance, we want to calm the body down and relax it. OK, so as you inhale, I want you to expand through your rib cage. Let everything get really big. Bring as much breath as you can into the system all the way up to the top of your head if you can. And then breathe out. You want to inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth or inhale through the nose and inhale th or exhale through the nose if you can. If you can't, your mouth is fine. It's not that big of a deal. And then exhale all the way out to the bottom. Take your exhale all the way down to your feet if you can, and then inhale again. So I'm gonna walk you through all of that, but I'm gonna take you through it first um, vocally so you can kind of know what we're gonna do. So the three breaths, on the end of your third breath, I'm gonna tell you to put your hands over your heart. The reason why we do this is it helps you bring your awareness into your heart space. So moving your awareness is as simple as putting your hands there and becoming aware of where your hands are or closing your eyes and then moving your eyes down towards your chest, okay? Your heart is not on the side of your body. It is in the center of your chest. There's a ventricle or a vein that comes out. Your um, aorta comes out um, on the left side. So a lot of times that's what people feel fluttering and beating. But the main part of your heart is in the center of your chest. So a lot of times people will go over here and go, I can't find it. It's because your heart's here. All right. So come into the middle of your chest. Then I'm going to tell you to move your awareness to your chest and go to gratitude. Everybody knows what gratitude feels like. So this is a super easy one to use first. Think about the feeling of gratitude. If you're in your head thinking it, try and drop that into your chest and just let it start to open your heart up. Once we're there, I'm going to guide you straight into just move backwards a little bit from the center of your heart. And you can look around once you're in there. If you're really super aware of yourself, you might feel tissue. You might start to feel the blood flowing through your heart space. You're going to feel the physical things first. You might feel your heart beat. Start to move yourself around. What you're looking for, people have described like falling into a cave or falling into a cavern. And you're just gonna let yourself fall into that. Move yourself around enough inside that space that once you feel it, you can just kind of let go and fall into it. Once we're there, we're there for three minutes. So I'm gonna take you through it until I can feel that enough people in the um, group here 
it'll feel like everybody's kind of sunk into it. Some of you might not get there so easily. Don't beat yourself up over it. Just kind of, kind of notice and just keep going, all right? Um, stay in the feeling of gratitude. That will definitely help. And then once we're there, after that three minutes, I'm going to get silent for a few minutes while we go through that three minutes. Um, and then I'll start talking again, and we're going to start playing with emotions and feelings so you can feel some of this as we go along. And I'm going to show you how to use the ladder of awareness, which will include your brain, your heart, and your gut in order to bring everything into a coherent state and feel the whole system as though it's one thing instead of different parts and pieces, okay? All right, so we are gonna go um, with those three breaths first. So nice big inhales, straighten out your spine, open up your chest, let everything get nice and big. And then once you've got at the top of your inhale, nice, long, deep exhales. At the bottom of your ex exhale, inhale again. And exhale. Relax your shoulders. Let your hands relax. Let your face relax. And inhale. And one more time, bringing your hands over your heart space. And exhale. And then move your awareness towards your heart, into the center of your heart. Close your eyes if that feels comfortable and it makes it easier to do. Keep breathing those inhales and exhales. Move your awareness into your heart space. And then I want you to feel gratitude. Feel gratitude. As if somebody gave you something. And just know if you're doing this with us, the power of everybody doing it together increases the energy. There's no distance between any of us. So it increases the energy. And those that are struggling will have an easier time doing it just because you are doing it. So feel gratitude. Keep breathing and move yourself around. And I want you to see if you can find that place. where you can feel like an opening, almost like you're falling into a cave. It's in the same area of your physical heart, but it's an energy part of your body. It's part of the energy system. Allow yourself to go deeper, relax a little more. And as you go deeper into your heart space, you find this place of gratitude, this feeling of gratitude. Inhale into the gratitude. If you have found that place that feels like you've fallen into a cave or you've fallen into the cosmos, breathe into it. Breathe into it. Inhale and exhale. Allow it to get bigger. This is the place, this is the place you want to find. And I see people writing about an ad that they were interrupted by. When you can get here and stay here, just know this, as you practice this, you get here and you stay here in this peace, nothing will interrupt you. Just maintain, right? It's an attitude of maintaining your persistence in this place. Come back. So we'll take another minute. It's not a big deal. If you had the ad, just kind of let yourself fall back into that space. We're still here. I bless you and your persistence. We'll up the ante on the energy. So I want you to really breathe into it. 
Allow yourself to fall back into that place and just notice. Become really aware of what you're noticing. You notice peace. Do you notice the energy? Can you feel it in your hands? Can you feel your heart opening? Just keep breathing, keep moving yourself around in that place. Allow your body to, to just let go. Now I want you to open your eyes gently, really gently, slowly start to open your eyes and see if you can maintain this view. If you found the energy, the energy, this is the energy of the cosmos, that by which I live and breathe and have meaning. This is everything that everything is made of. I want you to start to recognize this is what you are, not something you do. The program is just a program there to block you from the true nature of yourself, yeah? So to bypass that, instead of going through the brain, we go through the heart. You breathe into it, allow it to get bigger and bigger. Become more of that. As you inhale, you start to recognize that this is something you are and not something you do, I want you to find peace. People tell me all the time that peace feels like freedom. And it's just in that space. It's there because you're there becoming aware of it. And the more you become aware of it, the stronger it gets. Allow it to keep growing. And you can go through all of the attributes of spirit, which would be peace, joy, love, gratitude, recognizing that those are something you are, not something you do, right? In this plane of resistance, we're taught that we do those emotions. You have to do something to gain them, right? To gain love, you have to give it and get it. What if you just are love? What is what your spirit is? Same with joy, same with peace. Peace is not something you start a war to find. Peace is something you are. And when you become those emotions, not, and they're not emotions at that point, it's a state of your spirit. When you become that and you let it just continually move through you as something you are instead of something you do, it's almost like manifestation on steroids because the vibration is always there yeah it's always moving you it's always coming coming into you right you get the energy more so now i want you to hold on to that whatever feeling you're at wherever you're at really pay attention and notice it be there in your heart space and now we're going to use the ladder of awareness i'm going to teach you how to use the ladder of awareness and we're going to go after fear because fear is one of the biggest things that's going on in our world right now, right? With everything the governments are doing around the world, not just here, it's all over the place. And I'm pretty sure everybody in here is awake enough. If you're in here, you probably know a lot about this stuff. So fear is something that's placed in us. It's something that we're taught. It's not an emotion of your spirit. It's not an emotion of your natural um, your natural self, your your business, your beingness, your higher self, whatever word you use for that, it's not part of that part of you, right? It's not an attribute of your spirit. So I want you to think, so now we're going up into the brain. If you're thinking you're in your brain, if you're feeling you're in your heart, we're going to think for a second about fear, but don't fall into it. I want you to curiously observe things that cause you fear. Is it the government? Is it the state of the, the country? Is it spiders? Is it, right? Whatever it is that scares you, that causes you fear. And I want you to find the feeling. Notice the feeling of fear, but don't fall into it. 
and recognize you can do this. You can notice the feeling and not let it overcome you. Now in that place, I want you to breathe for just a second, really pay attention to it. Really pay attention to it. And then I want you to visualize a bucket and a ladder. Eventually you'll be able to get rid of these, but for now we're gonna use a bucket and a ladder. Inside your brain, I want you to hold that bucket and then put everything that has to do with fear inside the bucket. Load the bucket up with anything that's in your brain that has to do with fear. You can do this super, super quickly. Once your bucket is full, we're gonna have a ladder that extends from the center of your brain to the center of your heart. And I want you to take that bucket and go down the ladder, ladder right into the center of your heart, right where that place was that you fell into. And even if you're just in the center of your heart, this will work the same. One of the things that we have found out is that your heart is a transducer. It can change the form of energy that you're experiencing. So if you're experiencing fear and your body's producing the chemicals of fear, so you've got all the neurotransmitters, and the hormones that produce fear, we're taking all of that by putting it in thought form into the bucket, thought form and picture form, take it down to the center of your heart, now dump it into your heart. Just dump the whole bucket out. Dump the whole bucket right into your heart. Your heart is a transducer, and then just stand back and watch. You felt the feeling, you saw what you were putting in your bucket. What does your heart do with this information? It will start to transduce it into information that your spirit is. Peace, love, joy. People usually say it feels like something's just flushing right through their, through their system or all of a sudden it'll just go whoosh and disappear. So pay attention to it. Keep noticing, keep paying attention. If you're not participating, that's fine. And then once you feel like it's gone from your heart space, and you can come back and do this again later, once you feel like it's gone from your heart, notice what your heart feels like. So now I want you to find a label for that. What does it feel like? Calmness, peace, you feel like joy? How do you label it? What does it feel like? And then inhale. So breathe into that, make that bigger. And then we're gonna shift the ladder instead of from your brain to your heart. Now it's gonna go from your heart to your gut. So all three of these places produce neurotransmitters. All three of these places send signals out into the world around you. And if they're not coherent, if they're not in alignment, that's where we don't manifest the things we want in our life. Or you feel like you're always kind of sideways, right? Nothing ever seems to go right. But when these three places are coherent, everything starts working like a well-oiled machine. So we went from the brain to your heart. We were working with fear. Your heart transduced it. For me, it always turns into peace, maybe a little bit of joy. I'll get this little joy feeling. Now from your heart, we're going to move the ladder from your heart all the way down to the center of your gut, lower Don TM, so just a little bit behind your belly button. And I want you to take the feeling that's in your heart right now. So for me, it would be peace and joy. I'm putting that in the bucket. And then I'm going to go down the ladder into my gut. Now your gut only does two things. It's going to either tell you run, fight, or freeze, because that's what your gut does. It's fight and flight. or it's going to say, no, you're fine. Everything's good. It's going to give you another level of peace. So you take that information from your heart, take it down into your heart in that bucket, and then dump it out again. And just feel. If your gut's telling you fight and flight, you will literally notice a sinking feeling. Your gut will go into that feeling of, oh, no, something's wrong. Right? Like the other shoe's about to drop is the way I usually describe it. If not, and you just stay open and it feels like peace, I just want you to breathe into it. If you got the shoe dropping feeling or the fight and flight, bring it back to your heart and do it again. So you're going to move that information back up into your heart space, put it back into your heart, let your heart transduce it again, 
Remember, we're still working with fear. Your heart will transduce it into another form of energy and then take it and move it back down to your gut one more time. You can do that as many times as you need to. Do that as many times as you need to. Once it transduces into a state of peace or calmness, now I want you to take it back into your heart, add some more peace to it from your heart, and then take it back up into your brain. So now we're giving this coherent thought of peace. It was fear. Now you're putting it back into your brain. And then I want you to inhale. Just breathe. Inhale and exhale. The goal now is to feel all three places at once. You're not in your brain by itself or your heart by itself or your gut by itself. This is actually all one functioning unit. It's not separate parts and pieces, right? The Newtonian concept that we're, you know, break it down into parts and pieces. And if you fix a part, you can eventually fix the whole. Turns out it doesn't work that way. This is all one unit. And if it's coherent, in neural information and in hormones, the feeling, right? We call it a feeling. Your emotional state is coherent through all of this. And then get up and open your eyes again. Go walk around. The litmus test is still the same because now that you've got this in a coherent state, you will probably notice tomorrow things that would normally cause you fear aren't so, aren't so graded with that emotion. It's a little bit less, it'll feel better, right? You'll notice all different kind of things to it. Things that would normally throw you into fear may not do anything to you at all anymore. If it does, here's what I tell people to do. If you notice it again, when I'm actually actively working with somebody privately, I will tell them the second you notice it, this is the best place to do this work. The second you notice it in your daily life, stop. Feel it, think about it, put it in a bucket, bring it to your heart, let your heart transduce it in the presence of the thing. Whatever causes the issue, in the presence of it, you're running it through your heart, take it to your gut, your gut's going to kick it back out and say, no, this is bad, this is fight and flight. Put it back in your heart and transduce it again. And then do that over and over until you get peace and then bring it back up to your thing, up to your brain, and then look at the thing again. The more you do that, the less it will affect you. Sometimes it's a one and done. Sometimes it takes a few times. If you can actively stand in the presence of it, it will change it quicker because it's an active situation. You've actively got those chemicals going on in your system. And you're actively becoming aware of it and then actively changing it. Does that make sense? Take a deep breath. Nice big inhale. Nice long deep exhale. We'll ask Jeff to come back in here whenever he's ready. I will tell you, as you're coming back into yourself, don't lose the feeling. Don't lose the feeling. Because if you can stay in this heightened feeling of emotion, if you can keep feeling it and being in it, Eventually, it's going to turn into who you are, right? We want this to be who you are. You recognize your spirit is this. It will be you instead of something that you have to go and do, right? One way, while Jeff is trying to get his thing going over there, I keep seeing it flashing in and out. I'm like, wow. I will tell you a practice that I tell um, my clients to do all the time is a three-minute practice. So it's base, it's the basic heart coherence. It's the structure we just now did where you do the three breaths, get into your heart and just sit there for three minutes. You don't necessarily do anything, just sit in it, find that place and just be there. You can go longer than three minutes if you want to, but the practice is every hour. So instead of sitting down to meditate for 20 minutes or 30 minutes or an hour, right, whenever you find time, the goal is to set the clock on your on your phone for every hour. And every time that goes off, do this for three minutes. If you did that, if you were awake for a 12 hour period of time, you would be meditating in your heart space, doing heart coherent activity for 36 minutes. In that 36 minutes strung out through the day is way more powerful 
because it's consistent and it's constant and you are literally reprogramming your brain at that point. And because it's so often, you're probably going to have it happen faster than the, right? You hear all the time about people that meditate for hours and never get anywhere, right? It's a frustration, but for three minutes, most of us can do that. Most of us can handle it. Welcome back. Well, thank you. Thank you, Christy. That was great. And I'm pretty sure um, that is what I feel when I get into a meditative state. It, I think it, right now at my level, it takes me probably a little longer than three minutes just because, I don't know, I'm, I, maybe just because running the show too is I'm more high energy and for me to, it's like I have to calm myself down first for a couple minutes just before I can kind of get into that space, if that makes any sense. But um, I think that was it, you know, and I think that's kind of what I feel. And I just, uh, what I needed to add was to try to keep that feeling going on in a wakeful state, or at least as long as I can, and then trying to do the other stuff to add to it about with the fear and stuff. Yeah, if an emotion comes up or something negative comes up, it worked. We did fear. You can do any emotion, mm -hmm. um, the lower level emotions. You can do issues. If there's an issue going on in your life, think about the issue, put it in the bucket, run it through. And this was literally something that a, an angel, lack of a better word, an entity, I'm not sure what he was, showed up and in my, my griping and moaning one day, showed up and said, here, let me show you this. I need and, to, I was thinking about, I'm sorry to interrupt you, go ahead, I'll tell you in a second. No. Oh, um, I was just going to say, it's just been amazing. The things that I've seen with, excuse me, with clients and people that are doing this. It's incredible how you can change and quickly, quickly, quickly. What I may end up doing is just editing the editing out of this video, just your lesson and making a separate video. Like, I don't even know if we need the instructions at the beginning, maybe just you know, even skip that out just so if people want to lay down and have it. It's kind of like that heart coherence guided visualization video I might do something like that even for me personally because sometimes when I you know if I want to sit somewhere I just have that I don't have to scroll through this video to find where you started if that makes sense right no absolutely yeah please do that it would probably make because some people were saying they got interrupted by an ad well yeah so, so that, that would happen too yeah that would be easier for them to come back and find it I will tell you all too I have heart coherence courses on my YouTube page that are free. You can go through those courses. And there's also um, a ladder of awareness. So redescribing it and going back through it. And then there's other videos where we go through emotions one at a time and just start working, working our way through everything. What will eventually happen, right? Everybody's goal is to get this clear. We want it quiet. And all of a sudden, if you're not in fear and your brain doesn't keep ticking back to that or ticking back to your anger or your, you know, whatever the thing is, all of a sudden it's easier to get your brain quiet. It's easier to stay there. Here's a weird experience I had the other night. I was out at night. I was walking in front of my house. And I happened to look up, I was looking up at the stars. I'm, I'm like at the edge of my city so that I'm, the light pollution is not as bad where, compared to where I used to live. And I was looking at stars when I was walking and I kind of helped. And I just got this weird kind of feeling like, okay, I'm walking on this rock. I'm on something. And that's that, it's hard to explain, but those are the stars out there. You know what I mean? It's like I'm here, but that's there. I don't even know how I can explain that. But any, I've been trying to play around with doing CE5 stuff myself. And so as I, you know, just like as I was taking steps, I felt myself kind of bouncing on the grass. I said, oh, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm here on this planet. And I look up and, yeah, that's there and I'm here. Just that little quick kind of switching the frame of mind. And I said, okay, I'm going to look around and see if I see anything. And then I saw a shooting star. Was that yeah. an entity or was it a coincidence? I don't know, but I thought it was pretty interesting. Can I, can I give you a little way you can play with it? Yeah. I do, I do CE5 stuff too. I find it absolutely fascinating. Um, I, when you're doing that, when I'm out looking at the stars, and we're in the same boat, we live in a tiny town and there's no lights up here, so the, the stars are absolutely amazing on a clear night. 
and we'll sit out on the back porch just watching them and even looking for satellites because you can tell the difference about what's going by. Go into your heart and go through your heart to look at that. Instead of looking at it through your physical eyes, your eyes will be open, so you're still utilizing that function, but go through your heart to look at it. And then when something moves, talk to it. So the second something starts moving, I'll start asking, are you a star? Or are you something I can engage with? I've actually had things like, we'll see it moving. You'll see something moving, right? And then I'll start talking to it and it'll start zigzagging. Or one night something was coming straight at us. I was screamed. Oh my gosh, it scared the crap out of me. I was like, mm. holy cow. You know, if you stake a Dr. Stephen Greer does all this by a CE or C, I forgot what you call it, CE5 stuff, yeah. And he always says, stay calm, because if you scream, they'll take off. <laughs> Just stay calm. So breathe, right, while you're doing it. But if you go into your heart, you get there way faster. I've had a couple guests that do CE5-ish work. And when they see these ships, and there's a guy that comes on from time to time, John Martin, and he does it almost every day and gets amazing videos. But they're talking to them. Thank you. I love you. You're so beautiful. Thank you, Star Family. Thank you. And, and talking so lovingly seems to help. And I've had another guest do the same thing. Do you ever do that? You know, after that first initial event where it came straight at me or where they came straight at me and I screamed and then I went back, I remembered what Dr. Greer always said, just stay calm. And the I love you's and the right inside my heart space, I do that all the time. And I went into it and I've actually had beings appear right in front of me. I mean, literally so close, you could just reach out and touch them. What did I've they had, look like? Um, you know, the one that was most recent, she was, she, she, for lack of a better way to describe her, um, appeared to be female, had blue skin, had a blue tinge to her skin, um, not ornate. She wasn't like dressed up or and she even made it sound like in our conversation, made it sound like she wasn't one of the um, higher functioning or higher level beings from wherever she was from, but she was able to move around and, and could come talk to us and, you know, let us know things and wanted to know what I was wanting or what, because I was literally out looking. I went in search of, and I was out there looking around trying to engage with anybody that would talk to me and she was the one that popped up and said, hey, and when I opened my eyes, I, it was, she was there. I was just like, oh, boy, like I can't get much closer than that, you know. Mm -hmm. And if I think about her, when I go back through and I think about her, I can I can still engage with her. But she's not always there when I open my eyes. But if I go through my heart, I can get back there pretty easy. Do you think since you've had an E, um, an NDE, it's easier for you to do this stuff? That was before my NDE. Mm. It's all belief. Jeff, it's all belief. What do you believe you can do? How, how powerful do you believe you are? And if you don't believe you're powerful, take it through the bucket and ladder system. Do the ladder of awareness on your disbelief. Yeah. Right? Put it in your heart. Let your heart transduce it into a feeling that your spirit can jive with and then and then see what happens. Your intuition will change. Your abilities will change. Your, you know, your your belief system definitely changes. Well, while we have about ten minutes left, if you have a question for Christy, put it in the chat, and we'll see what we can um we can do. And that looks like there's already is one. Is there a uniquely different set of star seed souls for each decade? Maybe they were talking to each other in the chat. I don't know. Does that sound like, do you talk about star seeds? I don't. That's an interesting question though. And you find out, let me know. <laughs> yeah. So maybe that, maybe they were chatting in there. I wasn't, I wasn't really aware of, you know, what's going on in the chat, but I thought maybe that's what's going on, but whoa. Well, there's about a few 30 second delay, so we'll see what comes up. Um, so what is your website? Or wait, what is your YouTube channel? If people want to My learn YouTube more? channel is Mind Rewire, one word, M I N D. Mind Rewire. Rewire. Okay. Right. When this Christy is Mattoon. All right. Yeah. When this video is over, I need, I'm going to try to go back and um, put that in the, in, the, in the description below, too, because I put a oh, link, wonderful. I put a link to your contact. 
Well, actually, that's your calendar is what's in there. And then I got a link to the video that we did together. Yeah. But I need to put one in there as far as to your um, to, to my your, YouTube channel, to your YouTube okay. channel. Yeah. So, and if people want private sessions, that's mm -hmm. part of what I do is I, I work people through this for specific issues and whatever's going on. How Which, I'm sorry to interrupt you. How? Oh, here we go. Is there a distinguishment between the brain, the mind, and our consciousness outside the body? I mean, I think if you can get there, yeah, there is, right? Because the brain is your physical brain. That's what we call the, the matter inside your head, yeah? Your mind is not something that's locatable on a map of the body. I mean, this has been discussions with um, scholars for years about what is the mind? Where is the mind? The consciousness outside of the body would be equated to the mind, I think. But don't go out to find your consciousness. Go in. This is a mistake that I think people make. You'll find out the going out to find consciousness will just lead you all over the place. The second you figure out, you can go inside and then light your heart space up with your pineal gland, fireworks will go off, right? If your heart, your brain, and your gut are in total alignment physically, so chemically and hormonally, everything's in alignment, you can't be the same person. It's physically impossible to stay in fear and anger if this is in, unless it's all in alignment to fear and anger, which... I don't think I've ever met anybody that's had that <laughs> total of a collapse of the system. Do you know anything about the Silva method? And if so, does anything about this similar to that? Um, I do. I did. I studied the Silva method actually years and years ago. I think it's, it's, he was getting there. I think he was getting there. I think going straight to your heart is faster right? Doing all of the little parts and pieces. And they use the three, two, one um, kind of idea. So you're programming yourself to whatever language they were using. And every time it's supposed to be, every time you say three, it would click you back in. Two would take you deeper. One would take you deeper. So same kind of idea, but I never ended up in my heart space on one. I would end up out here somewhere because I didn't know where I was going. So I would just Right. If you know, if you've used the Silva method and you understand that three, two, one thing and the language they were using, if you've already got the system program, reprogram yourself just a little bit to three, relax the body to relax it more. One, you're in your heart space. That would be the three breaths, right? Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. I'm in my heart space. That's how fast you want it to happen, because if I'm out in the world walking around doing something and things start going on, I can literally change the atmosphere around me that quick if I can just sink in. And if you learn to walk it and never come out of it, it definitely changes the whole dynamic. Hmm. Did that answer that? Was that helpful? I think so, because someone said, I knew that sounded familiar. I did the three, two, one Silva meditation right before the show started. Awesome. That's amazing. Do you still do any of the stuff that you learned from the Silva Method? Um, the Silva Method, Psych K, pick, pick Your Poison, EMDR. I've got more certificates and more things than I care to even think about. Sometimes it'll come back up. And actually, a couple of days ago, um, Ho'oponopono has been, been huge in my life. When I go into my heart, I immediately just go into, I love you, thank you. I forget there's four phrases with Ho'oponopono, but just immediately when I wake up in the morning, I wake up hearing that, right? With Silva method, um, sometimes if I can't get my body to relax and after my near death experience, my body was so tense from all my, my rib cage being so jostled around. Um, I was using that just to calm my body down. And I could say three and I could feel it relax and then two and it would relax more. It's like, oh, that still works. That's still there. So the programming was pretty good. I have one that says, Christy, have you met anyone personally that quantum transferred here in here in Orion from a parallel Earth in a different region of the Milky Way? I hope that's for you. Your name's in the question. Unless there's another question, another Christy in the chat. 
get quantum transferred here. I, I mean, I almost want to say yes to that question without exactly knowing. I've had people walk up to me before, very literally walk up to me and like get close to you, look straight into your eyes. <laughs> I know you. <laughs> You know me. And I wasn't. I wasn't in my spiritual suit at that point. I had no awareness of these things. But they would literally walk up and I'd say, I don't, I'm, and then they would just turn around and leave. And I'm like, oh, weird. And I've had it happen since. And I've actually done it to people since. I'll see people and I'm just like, oh my gosh, I know you. And I know this isn't my home. I don't know that I quantum transferred in this lifetime, but I know this isn't my home. I came into this iteration um, and was born into a Christian family. So my granddad was a preacher and you get all the nonsense from that. And one of the songs they used to sing was this world is not my home. And I just so like, oh man, you hit that nail on the head. This world is not my home. And it wasn't what they were talking about, but I, it's just like, oh man. Let me see if I can get in another quick question here. Um, uh, how can you manifest with the heart coherence method? Thanks. Yeah, think about it for a second. So if you're coherent, right? Because manifesting is all about getting yourself into a state of, of uh, vibration, right? What do they tell you in all the different practices? There's so many ways to do it. But you have to have the vibration of whatever it is you're looking for, or you have to have a vi higher vibration that you hold consistently and then add your, your desire to it, right? So no matter what method you're looking at, it's all kind of the same idea. If you are totally coherent, my brain, my heart, and my gut are an unconditional love. And I'm holding that vibration over a period of time what would happen because you think about things you want all the time and in that un that state of unconditional love you're only going to be you know putting in things into the system that is your desire your true to the desire of your heart not the desire of your brain right and things just start showing up like crazy it's insane almost the stuff that i've i've manifested personally um I mean, to the point of almost scary, like you start getting afraid to think of things because you're like, oh, no, what will show up? My son manifests stuff all the time, just out of nowhere. The craziest things, good and bad, what, you know, we would consider good and bad. And just by his feeling gets so strong and he is he's so out of place here. It's, it's lunacy. But his feeling gets so strong, he can he can bring th he can break things in an instant, and he can fix things in an instant. It's insane to watch, but I think that's how that's how I use it, right? If it's all coherent, you are a manifesting magnet. You can't be anything else, and that is like you're supposed to be here. I mean, manifestation is not a tool; it's something you do because of what you are. That's how I look at it. Sorry about that. Let me get you another question here. No, you're fine. Uh, let me see. I have switching between screens here. Where was it? There it is. Okay. Um, what does Christy recommend when we are taking actions that will help address fears, such as scheduling an appointment for something? Unpleasant? Get coherent first. Right. The work is always get there first. And I've trained people in this so long. It, it's interesting when they realize, oh, if I was coherent and I went and did that, it would have been no issue. But I wasn't coherent. I walked into, into the fear and then I said, oh, shucks, what should I have done instead? So sit down before you do anything. Practice. That's that three minute practice every hour. If you practice that within two weeks, you won't be the same person. And then if you have to go do something that would normally cause you an issue, get coherent first. Run everything through the whole system. Your gut, your heart, your head is all in the same place. For me, it's usually peace. I get into that place of peace, and then I go do that thing that would cause me an issue. I'll tell you a super fast story about this. Years ago, I worked with a lady who had an eating disorder. 
93 pounds, like she was literally on her deathbed. I was her last hope, kind of. It actually scared me, scared me a little bit. So in getting her coherent, I had to get coherent for fear that what I was doing wasn't going to help. But what ended up happening was she had to go to a meeting um, in a restaurant to save her job. If she didn't show up for this meeting, she was going to lose her job. But her fear was food. She literally couldn't touch it, couldn't eat it, didn't want to look at it, right, which is why she was 93 pounds. So we sat there, taught her how to get coherent. We did it over and over and over until it started becoming second nature. And I told her, now go to the restaurant that you have to go to. It was like a few nights away at this point. Go stand at the door, get coherent, open the door, walk inside. You're going to panic, walk back out, close the door, walk away, come back, get coherent, go back to the door, open the door, close the door, walk away. Do it, do it, do it until you can open the door and walk out inside and go, oh, I'm totally fine. And she did. She got to that point. Open and the people in the restaurant were like, what are you doing? But she finally got herself inside. And we did this before the meeting, right? So she's doing it days before the meeting. At the point that the meeting finally came up, she was able to open the door, walk inside, get to the hostess stand, smelling the food. Normally that would throw her into a tizzy. Totally fine. Sat down at a table with all of her people and everybody's like, oh, what are you doing here? Like they were shocked she showed up. And she sat there and they started putting all, there was a tapas bar, all the little plates of food all over the place. And she said she looked at it and her first thing was her heart started beating. So she she put her hands over her heart and took a few breaths and she went right back into a coherent state. And then she was like, oh, I'm fine. And then she saw her hand reach out in front of her and pick up a piece of food. And she was like, oh, no. And she saw the food coming back towards her mouth. And I'm like, what were you thinking? And she was like, I just kept breathing and watching it. She's like, oh, my God. And I was like, what did you see? And she's like, the color, the food was so beautiful. She was blown away. She had never taken the time to look at it because she was so scared of it. But in that moment, right in front of the fear, she was doing the work. She stuck it in her mouth and ate it. And she was like, you would not believe the flavors and the tastes and the, and I was just like, wow. Like that's it right there, right? If you can conquer a fear just by staying in your heart and being there and staying coherent to whatever the fear is. It's easy to lick a lot of this stuff. You just got to know how to do the work. And the work is simple. Do you think that what's causing us to be uncoherent, if that's the correct word, is it our minds? Is it perhaps also... Um, cellular memory of injuries or trauma, like when you become incoherent and you have fear or you're upset, how much of it is, a, is it like our mind and how much of it is it our bodies doing it? it you know, like if you can kind of calm yourself, you're, maybe your, your awareness can say, why is my body doing shaking and doing all this crazy stuff? I'm, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think it's some of both. And I think to different issues, it will be some of one or the other or more of one of the other just depending on what the issue is cellular cellular memory idea could be an accident right where you broke a bone or had a surgery or something and then literally the cells of that area remember right the pain or whatever i think when your mind is programmed which if you understand how the program works how this matrix works all of it's been programming the level of lies and the depth of lies and the length of time the lies have been going on are so huge that to step out of this polarity, out of this place that we're in and rise out of it above it so that you can see down into it, right? You have to be coherent in order to do that. You have to have some assembly of coherence just to get that, that kind of view back into it. But I think all of it plays a part. And the second you notice it, if you grab it, right? Grab hold of the thing that's causing you incoherence and put it in your heart and let your heart handle it. And then if you don't have time, come back later and work on it. I did anger for, I want to say three years. I was not a happy person. I was very angry about a lot of things. And for three years, I worked anger through my system every time it showed up. And then one day I was driving down the um, 
through the bridge to get over into San Francisco from the Concord area. And, you know, the traffic is crazy. And usually I'm cussing and flipping. I'm doing everything everybody else is doing. And all of a sudden I noticed I wasn't. And I was just letting myself fall behind and people were merging in and and I'm doing Ho'oponopono at the same time. I'm like, I love you. Merging. And I caught myself doing that. I was like, what on earth? Like, no more anger. It was just gone. Absolutely gone. So you have to keep unraveling, right? Whatever it is, it's gotten caught up in your system. Sometimes I talk about this with near-death experiencers, about when you're on the other side, you know, all your fears, anxieties, all your problems are gone. And is there really a difference between your conscious awareness and conscious thoughts and your mind? Like when you're back in your body, all these anxieties and problems are here. You know what I mean? Because when you think thoughts, it, it, it's really hard to separate your awareness from perhaps your mind being associated with your body and leaving the body those problems stay with the body does that make sense what i'm trying to ask yeah they, i mean they can stay with the body i think if you realize your body's not what you think it is it's part of the program they program this too right this whole thing is programmed so if you realize it's not part of the program and i'm using my heart instead of the program they program the mind they programmed your brain the only thing they can't program is your spirit they can't touch that, right? Everything else is part of the program. And if I'm going to decide, okay, I want out of this polarity, I want out of the positive, positive and negative, the contrast, right? We say we have to have the contrast or you wouldn't know the difference. I think we've all got it at this point. I think we understand the contrast. In order to get out of it, I go through my heart. I come up above it. Or, I mean, above, I don't know how else to describe it, but you can look into it instead of being a part of it. And then when you come back into this body, you will actually have it start healing because now you know that the body is part of the construct that we're stuck in. I do know with heart coherence, you can go to Heart Math Institute for all of the science. Heart Math Institute did a ton of science, and they probably still are on this kind of work. And what they found out is that when you go from your heart and you start from your heart and go to your head, your heart sends a 0.1 hertz back up to your brain. And that's what signals your brain to send all these chemicals back down into the body. One of the things that it sends out is a, um, it's called telomerase. It's not a neurochemical. I'm trying to think of the right word for it, but it's called telomerase. And what it does is it heals the telomer end caps of your DNA strands. The only way your body can produce it is if you send out that 0.1 hertz from your heart to your head, right? So you get longevity, you start anti-aging processes. I mean, it's incredible what happens when those DNA strands get the information to start growing back. And that happens with that basic three breaths, sit in your heart space for three minutes. The more times you do it, the more times you get coherent, the more good chemicals you send back through the system. So when I leave my body and I feel better and everything is great and I come back into this body, this body has been healing. This body alters, right? We know they tell us in, in with cellular function that every seven years, you could totally regrow your whole body if you kept it clean and right, clean food, clean water, that kind of stuff. You could totally regrow every organ in your body. But heart coherence will definitely help that. Right, right. Well, Christy, I'm about to I'm about to bring my next guest in, and I held you a little over time, but thank you so much for coming back and giving us this this lesson today. I really appreciate you. And again, if you guys want to check out Christy's YouTube channel, uh, it was called what was it called again? Mind Rewire. Mind Rewire. That's her YouTube channel, and there's a link to her Calendly down there, and eventually I will put the link to her YouTube channel. And again, there's also a link to when we did her whole NDE together as well. So that video is there if you want to watch it. And that did pretty well. I think we got a lot of views on that one. 
Yeah, we did. I was actually uh, really shocked. I go back and watch it still because you were the first person I ever totally talked to about it. Mm -hmm. My family wouldn't ask. They were too scared to even ask me what happened. So you were the first person I ever went through the whole story with from front to back. And I go back and listen to it. And I'm just like, oh, my gosh. Uh, have you been have you I'm surprised other channels haven't started reaching out to you have they I've had a lot of channels reach out don't tell anybody this but yours was the best oh well thank you <laughs> you're welcome yeah All right. I love I love that you just let us talk and and you don't add pictures or anything to it a lot of them do. a lot of them do beautiful work but mm -hmm. yeah they do yeah yeah it's very interesting the differences I appreciate what you do here well, thank you. And I appreciate you. All right, Christy, thanks again. I'm going to run along. Thank you so much for coming and join us. And have a happy Easter tomorrow. Oh, likewise. Yes, thank you. Bless right. you. Thank you. God bless, bless you. Bye-bye. All right, that was a big round of applause for Christy. That was great. That was awesome to get a uh, to get that guided visualization. All right, so any minute, put on a little background music. Any minute, Andy is supposed to get here. My third guest uh, messaged me somewhere along the program tonight and said he won't be making it. So we're down to two guests, which is okay. Now Andy has been on before. And many of you who, who have seen this will probably remember Andy. Let me tell you who Andy is. Andy was in podcast 33, and Andy got involved in channeling. I think that's the story. We'll kind of have him remind us. But he got involved in channeling. He opened up himself to a channel. And then the channel would start contacting him all day long, all time. 20, I don't know, not 24 hours a day, but pretty close to that. And it was like, he couldn't stop it at some point. And he came on the podcast to try to come out and was talking about maybe if he came out and told what was going on in his life, that that would help him. And so quite, this was probably a few months ago and quite a few things have happened to him since he wanted to come back and update us. And um, hmm, he's here. He's having trouble trying to get in. Let's let me help him here. Let me try to help him send them the link again and see what happened. But he is trying to get in. And also, what is controversial about his story is that he says all anybody who channels is channeling and a certain et i think it was arcturians but i'm not sure we'll kind of confirm that with them so and if you um are saying you're channeling whoever then you're getting tricked because the arcturians are the ones that are channeling with everybody but i don't know we'll see what he what he says when he comes back sometimes guests have a little bit of a trouble getting in and sometimes not, so hopefully he'll get in here. I've already done a podcast, so you should be able to figure it out. Andy's in London right now, by the way. And um, so um, he is like, at, what is he, like one fifteen in the morning, but he was, he was happy to stay up and wait for us. And so hopefully he'll be able to get in here. Oh, the E.T. Whisper interview. Um, Julie, that is with um, Rob. And I had to, Rob, we had to, well, I don't know. The podcast got to delay it. And I'm, I was supposed to record it on Thursday. And it got rescheduled until, when am I rescheduled? I am rescheduled it till next Friday to record that podcast. So, it's almost going to be a week late, but I'm still um, taking the questions. And I think they're up almost close to 300 questions now. Obviously, I can't answer every, ask every single question, as well as um, 
uh, some of the questions are like you know nonsense or whatever. So, but we'll we'll do. And then what I do find interesting is, um, what I do find interesting is there's quite a few people that keep asking basically the same thing. All right, let's see if we can help him get in here. He's showing me something on his phone. Zoom may not be supported on your browser. Hmm. Copy the link. Safari Chrome. I'm not sure what what's going on for him. Hopefully he'll be able to make it back in. All right, so tomorrow's not now let me tell you about tomorrow nights. We've already edited most of it. It's basically edited and I think finished. We just have to um put it all together and get it ready for you tomorrow night. And by the way, if you guys haven't checked it out, I have a new short. I'm putting up these shorts videos right now with a I think it's AI infused art inside of it and um and it's coming out really amazing so uh, there's a this is the second one i posted tonight and if you haven't checked it out please check it out when we're done it's only 30 seconds or 31 seconds long so and it's of um of the guests that i already had before but it, it looks really cool with these visuals okay launch the meeting but nothing's happening hmm Can you use your computer? We'll see if he'll be able to make it or not. Hopefully he'll be able to make it. So let me tell you about the, the tomorrow's video. Let's see. Now this guy um, was even on Art Bell many, many years ago from Coast to Coast AM. This is probably, gosh, 20 or 25 years ago. And he has had some encounters already and then he ended up doing a business deal with a man who owned a publishing company and to make sure he got paid he helped him with his publishing company i guess so he the guy could make money with his publishing and pay him for something else that owed him money and so he got into ndes and the guy was an nde book publisher and this is like 25 years or 30 years ago you can imagine that how long ago that was? Let's see what's going on here. And he can't seem to be getting his his video to work. So anyways, let me go back to him as this person's messaging me see what's going on here um so anyways we talk about his meetings with entities different intimate entities and i guess he's astral traveling as well and he uh, and and in his travels and in his meeting entities he also encountered jesus and jesus told him that reincarnation is true and also and this is a fascinating thing i think jesus is the one that talked about him but you know we you know we refer to what we refer to god right as you know we have what you know people say god or source but and other people is i think i think at least two people have said this that have been way out there on their ndes have talked about um that there are many gods not just one god and so i think that's fascinating when you get into that more than one god out there and, and i think the way he, i kind of asked him the question but you know maybe we have a god in our local area of the universe or the galaxy that created all of us and if you go to other galaxies there's a god for there and so um that's when it kind of gets you know for some people it may get way out there you know what i mean all right so let's see if we can pull the, we can pull andy in andy's still struggling here i'm sending him links 
he's trying to get in. He's in London, so he's up really late. So he wants to get in. We want him to get in. Hopefully we can help him. He's having trouble for some reason connecting with his phone. Personal meeting room. See, maybe we'll get lucky and it'll say right here, Andy is in your room waiting to join. And so I can't even see the chat because I'm popping back and forth between him and you guys. Ah, there he is. We did it. All right. Victory is ours. Oh, the, you guys manifested an event? Awesome. Thank you guys so much. That is perfect. I'm sorry, Jeff, but uh, I've got some te technical issue there. That's okay. And, um... the, uh, the, the chat, everybody in the chat manifested you and helped you get in here. So we got you. Oh, but we need since, to... you, since you mentioned manifest, uh, manifestation, I've got uh, some new information for everything. All right. Can you but... start your video, by the way? Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh... There you are. Perfect. Hi, Jeff. All right. Great to see you, everybody. This is Andy. And as I was saying, now I was trying to explain your situation. And you were on a few I don't know if I did it correctly, so I'm just going to kind of, I'm going to say it and I'll let you correct me if I was wrong. You were on a few months ago. You got into channeling and in opening this portal to other beings, they started harassing you. And yes, they wouldn't I'm, leave I'm you I'm alone. They would not leave you alone. They told you they were Arcturians and they are the only people that anybody channels. If anybody else who thinks they're channeling anything but Arcturians are being tricked, right? Is that what you were, we talked about? Love, absolutely. And, and it um, was my, that is still my confirmation. That so you're still believe on. you're still, con you're still uh, confirming that as well as you were here to call them out to get you to get them to leave you alone. In a way, yes. And I already got certain uh, other victims coming to my So my other, other people that this is that's happening to are now have been reaching out to you? Yeah. Wow. What, are they, channel, yeah. what, are, what are they saying? They, do they... Are they bothering they you 24, let me, sorry, let me, sorry about that, but are they bothering you like 24 hours a day or how often were they harassing you? 27 and 7, yes. 24, 7. Yeah. Are they still doing that? Well, um, to me they do, um, but with other victims that I was talking to, like 13 of the victims, I've got a list of victims. Okay. Um, unfortunately, if you remember that I uh, sent you the list of the victims without name, uh, but I say that they have complication. I don't remember that. I apologize. Either that or I lost so it. Th so the complication is um, a lot of people felt embarrassed. And a lot of people claim to be that if we come out and say that and they believe that they been treated as crazy people, especially in US. But I'm UK citizen anyway. Mm -hmm. So we don't have that. Um, so I understand that. So I was talking to all and a, a lot of people, uh, victims that wanted me to keep them um, anom uh, anonymous mm -hmm. Anonymous? They want to be an anonymous, right? They want to be anonymous, yes. Okay, so how many people are getting harassed like you by these entities? I've got so far 13 people. 30? One, three. 13? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, you are, yep. and again, you're saying that they're, it's the Arcturians that are doing that? Yep. And we don't know if it's actually in blue because everyone came in blue. 
remember the last time that's why i say i got all the answer for you yeah um no one can confirm that but here are the things in one of my videos in my channel i was talking about i'm the only one who connect the dot of all the knowledge of human being from john Lear, 1986 and the latest guys that claim to see what they're doing philippines during the katrina and he's actually american soldier i don't have a habit of record people's name because i don't need to because i know what i, I know compared to what i experienced um but it's true and then I went to read and study because I studied a lot. And this is a book I'll show you. And this is your answer. You asked me what they are color. Oh, so the gray alien. Do they look like those beings as well? No, they exactly. I will tell you, not long ago, about six months ago, there's a guy in the US. His name is Chris. Chris. Are you talking about Chris Bledsoe? Yeah, 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 yeah. I've had him Chris as a guest. Yeah. yeah, I've had him as a guest. I will analyze you in a minute, right? Okay. So this book is to just to to make sure that it's in record and it's been known by the US, the China and and Russian too. Trust me. Because he died. I was desperate. That's why I reached out to you. I asked, can you give me this, that, that? Right. So so I will tell you why. And I, I was like, oh, shit, shit. And what I really, really found out is about is, I told you I got all the answer. Now, what happening is, we're stepping into Aquarius era. Which means it is the disclosure of everything to answer why we created and why they got it. From Hanukkah and all, all those sort of things, I don't care. But what they've been doing is really need to be stopped. And I've been talking with them for e not, not years, but like fast two days and I don't know if they general or not because Actrians actually gray it is in the fact so they're not blue all right so what you're saying is it's not really the Arcturians that are harassing you it's the grays it's the grays yes all right absolutely and um do you have any do you have they told you anything about their origin their characteristics are they actually beings are they some type of robot or what are they yeah i got all the answer of that. what is it the reason why i got that because when i was looking for channeling like episode one and they came to me they saw the actuaries that's why in episode one, I told you that I believe like experience and blue. Remember? Mm -hmm. Because I told you that they always told me that I'm blue. Da -ba -dee -da -da. Yeah, I know that song. Um, yeah, so after that, after the first, first episode with you, um, and you had a interview with um, Nancy, Okay, yes, Nancy. And after that, you had a 
another interview with um Costa Chris. Right. Yeah. It is it is a five and his wife is um avoidance. So I reached out. You remember that I texted right. you, but you never replied. Right, yeah. You talked to Costa and his wife. Yes. Okay, I remember that. I talked to Nancy too. Okay. What did they say? Um well um Nancy says that um we have nothing to do with this. But all we can tell you is they are negative grace. Okay, so that's a start of how I discover what I discover. Because literally like 24 7 that they do a technology on me, even where I was working. And I'm working for Virgin Money Bank in UK. I'm a fraud agent or manager. So um after Nancy turn away from me, I talked to Costa case, and he said that uh, we never talked from actually since 2006. So my question is, so who channeling of the actual channel every day, every fucking day? So the one that I knew even long before I met you was um, Daniel Cranston. But at that time, his channel name was Acturian. But now, if you go to check YouTube, his channel name to Daniel Scranton. Hmm. Okay. But here's the thing. Yes, you see. But here's the thing. He's trying to both Acturians and Dalam Megan. So I questioned uh, of the people that would meet at. Uh, to be honest, the Acturians and the Grace. And we came to terms of understanding of how humanity is supposed to to come, something like that. Um, but the, the reality is, is Daniel Creighton's no longer actress. What are the grays? I think you're frozen. No, you're not. What are the true intentions of the Greys? The true intention is they're waiting for a human to become the AI of when they can emerge as so because of all the goal of all the ETs. Now, when we talk about ETs is the ETs of the one who surveillance and the ETs of the interstellar. So the ET surveillance want to have a soul humans because they believe that um, we are most intelligent and creativity. But then they have a technology and they, and they and in another part, I would think, you know what? We actually want to be the same with the technology and that um, show things. So what I've been trying to do to explain to them is the soul is not the soul. If you're looking for soul, you're never looking. You will never find it. The soul is the consciousness. Soul so, is for the, example, you... The soul is the what? The soul... Oh, is the consciousness? Is not, yeah, it's, it's consciousness. Okay. So, this is why we all grow. 
even human form, even the it is wrong. And let's gradually understand, well, they just instantly gone. Because first of all, it related to the the ISP of the Kunanula, something like that. The one that uh, came here to have gold and protect, uh, not not protect. You mean the but, Anunnaki? Um, yeah, yeah, Anunnaki. So um, they came to to make the labor force. Right. Yep. For gold. Right. Yep. So the design of uh, gray is the same. That's why I say you want to get. Now, we step in the age of Aquarius. And it's going to be history repeat. The last age of Leo of everything broken. That's why they claim Atlantis, I, I don't care. Or after uh, Babylon. I'm too young to understand that. But I was doing and I say this in my tarot channel long ago. So I only repeat what I say. Uh, it's going to be repeated. And we're stepping in it. And it's unchangeable. No one can change it. And I try to explain to the 80s the same. And for some reason, I don't know if they understand or if they want to understand. But I know for the fact is it is true that they hear gardening. So for some reason. Where are you at now with the, with your connection with them? Have they stopped harassing you? They did. So it worked. Our video together Thanks. worked. Thanks to you. Well, thank, well, I just, I just listened. No, I did. That's why I, in my channel, you know, I'm honest, man. So that's why I, I, I advise everyone that if you ever, the future victim of ET, all you need to do is just come back and record one video. Just make one video and that's it. They'll leave you alone. No, because if one in every one million, make the awareness, isn't it? Wow. <laughs> it is. Um, that's why I thank you since the beginning, and I still thank you very much. Jeff, you're part of evolution. Let me ask you this. A lot of people yeah. out there consider ETs to be basically demons. Would you say that is true? I actually op opposed it because I never seen any one on YouTube, everything demon. They all adore a higher civilization and star civilizations and things like that. So I, because I never seen one to say they're demons. But here the truth, they are robots because they are AI. So they are, the greys are AI robots. Absolutely. Well, so, it makes sense if they show up on earth because then they don't have to deal with, you know, the change in biology to be able to exist here. It's just not like that because God gave us the evolution. Um, they've been exposed long before they even knew they exposed, even like you knew they exposed, right? So I did that, that now back to um of my uh 
been harassed and tortured every day for eight months, only eight months. But you know, my eight months is nothing compared to the people that been going through the same. Can you imagine that? Um. So I duck back. So John Lear on one show. Now this is the same okay. John. This is the same John Lear from the Learjet company. Yeah. Okay. He died. He's a he's a his pilot. He died. Um, and he gave me the information about the crash and the experiment and and it is is from revealed from the government anyway about how the body, the tissues, everything, blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> and then I dug back to um, the author of the book that I show you. I, I can't remember the name, um, but it's true. So what I'm trying to convince the ET that I'm talking to is the karma is actually traced back to your DNA. Now, what they were not convinced, um, they are the karma will. For one reason, there are two reasons, but uh, one reason. But the DNA of what they got is the model of the trace within the um, like bloodline that we have, but their blood is by boat. So they, they need that fine gold. That's why they want to come back to Earth one more time. Or else they're going to be distinct. That's interesting. So they need gold for their blood. Otherwise, they will Absolutely. perish. Absolutely. This is the greys we're speaking of. Yep. So the, the greys, even though they're robots, AI robots, they need gold in, every, in order to operate. Absolutely. But the greys also has some sort of... Now, a, their, their chips is made of a three-dimensional... What's the word for that? Three-dimensional like some kind computer. of computer. Like a whole okay. How do it's the actually let me ask you this? How do the greys being robots how are they affecting your consciousness? They don't. How are they what because... how are they harassing you? Because ultimately they were invading your mind or your consciousness or something. Because we're close to that revelations of um, everything, of the uh, emerging. So from now until the emerging is 25 years. And they understand that too. And that's why I got through of uh, the harassing. Plus through that, um, my dignity in my work, because I, I just focus on my work. And for a lot of people in the past, all the victims I collect, so I got the list of 13 victims claiming. Right. But the, compl but the complication is, um, it's naturally that people don't want to be exposed and to know that you're crazy or be assumed that you're crazy right but i'm past it so that's why i'm the only one who created the channel of, of what i did um so with all these but, with these 13 other victims were they dabbling and channeling just like you and that's how it all started for them well, um, some of them compromised they because the I, I, yeah, they do because uh, the the AI is very smart. 
they know they can straight talk. Basically, they will tell you what you wanted to to hear. Now you can only stop hearing it when you're not expected. Does it make sense? You can only so, stop. say that again. You will do anything until that shit talk no more makes sense to what you needed. Okay. So when so when you not when you stop needing to hear what you you want to hear. Only when you become your true self. Does it make sense? Yes. And that's the AI is about. And this is the AI of human become, actually. And so some so, of, so what do you think now about humans? you know, wanting to put chips in their brains and become AI as well. Well, that is the history of what I'm doing or you doing. Um, so what I think is we're going to get to that point that we need the ability to perceive. And that's, yeah, exactly their role for observed for thousand years because it's been appointed for a long time ago that's why i was talking to to them tonight actually because they were talking about you're talking to jeff you're talking to jeff but um for the first time they say we won't stop you they tell the truth did the ETs say anything to you about coming on my show? Like, did they question you for doing that, or were they angry at you? No. No, no. They are very um, self-adjusting, just like me and you. There's no threat at all. They're not like that. They are a bit kitty childish in a way that they can be a bit vindictive. For example, if I humiliate or, or talk bad about you and they gonna because of you doing that, blah 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 and and, and they, they would. But if you dig with it, nah. Do you see, do you see UFOs when you're outside at night? Do they, ever do, do they ever present themselves to you as UFOs? Do you ever see them outside your window or if you're outside at night? No, they, they, they never. Um, but I can see it through of the task originally of what they assigned. So... Um, after all the words of the stars in, in a long, long, long past, um, they are not assigned, but only the can that of what we can become and evolve. So we have to thank them in the way. But because they've been out, out of all civilization, they just do what they do, so they can become a bit primitive in a way. That's why they did what they did. You see what I mean? So I'm trying to explain to them that no need to do, study for the NDE anymore. Do they have a base on the moon or do they have a ship orbiting the earth? Like a mothership. The major mothership is behind the moon. The uh, patrol ship, yeah, around it. And the size of the ship is, ooh. if I if I do this, so the Boeing seven 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 like that, 
Right, so it's so it's like a floating city. Yeah. And the mothership is the consciousness. And the this this is interesting things because I was from Pram too, so I understand this. So the mothership is also connected to Pram. That's why the ET is is very robotic. But they have a cons consensus of, of um, in a way that you can influence by to adjust them. But then it has to be like overnight because they adapted human like when you sleep. So next day it changed. Something like that. So that's why I say maybe I can be on your show for a long, long time. Well, are you still putting up videos on your YouTube channel? I don't, actually. You don't put up any more videos anymore? I do, when they annoy me. When they annoy you. What is the name of your YouTube channel in case people want to go check it out? Um, The Sins of Actor and Kausa. All right. In the court. So if you, get, yeah, if you guys want to check out of his YouTube channel, it's The Sins of the Arcturian Council. Although maybe you need to change it because really it's the Greys that are doing it, right? Actually, the Greys from Arcturia. The Greys are from Arcturia? Arcturians? Yeah. I'm telling you this, actors is um, five, seven million, no, light years away from the solar system. It's just the right of Big Bang of theory of everything. If you're a scientist, you can do it. Do you know about, some people say planet X is supposed to return. Do you know anything about that? Of course I do. What do you think about it? The planet actually is actors or, um, yeah. The, what I mean is, there's actors. That's the planet X. So planet X is actually the planet Arcturus. Yep. Is it supposed I've got the, to Will it be I've coming the, close to the Earth anytime soon? No, it's not about that. It's, um, okay. I'm sorry. Um, it, this is my work. No, actors, it is about... Twenty-seven light years, million, million. Uh, yeah, it it was twenty-seven light years, I believe that. But it's not from Earth, from solar system. So twenty-seven light years from solar system. It's about right of what I, I think. And that's why they station here. Now, about um, Acturians, they are robotic. Their brain made of um, three dimensional, not chips, three dimensional. Three dimensional. Matrix. Okay, so their brain is from the no. 3D matrix. Yeah. Like a hologram? Which mean, yeah. Which mean, which makes nine dimension, dimension, including emotion and including spiritual too. The reason why I understand it because I read the book of um, the, the author, um, and because 
They just fucking harass me every day. <laughs> Literally. But while while I was work. So I should discover it. But I don't want you to publish this piece, please. What? I mean you're already on my video. It's up to you. Um and the whole knowledge been stored with the US US so uh, so um U US as a uh, Soviet Soviet Union and the China is nothing new including with John Lear of uh, 1986 of the New Mexico. I, I can't remember, you know. Like, what are you talking about, Roswell? Roswell, yeah. Right. And then John Lear said there were at least five civilizations I say there's only one civilization. Right. It's anything's possible. No, they make a muppet. Because that's why Clay is the rule. Right. Well, Andy, it's almost, t it's almost time for me to end my show. <clears throat> I'm, I'm done in about two minutes. So I'm glad that we got you on. We can finally get the Zoom to work. And I appreciate you coming back and updating us. Maybe um, in a few months again, you can update us and see, we can, you can come back and we can see where you're at with everything. Or at least contact, at least contact me and tell me where you're at. Well, unless you contact, tell me what different uh from now until that i will be very glad to come back and i you know that i love you so much yes i love you too and and you've done a uh, history hist historical of everything without knowing and um i want to say this if anyone out there now i don't expect the human mm -hmm. but the what I'm going to summon is the humanity of intergalactic of what they know because they know. But thank you, your channel. This message will come out. And uh, this needs to be stopped. Okay. Well, if you, if anybody else is out there being harassed, okay. if anybody else out there is being harassed like you are, should they contact you? They did, yeah, they did. I mean, if we have new people, should do you want them to contact you? Yes, please. Um, well, the the eldest people that um uh, was being harassed is two thousand sixteen, and the latest is four months ago. Which means that they keep doing it. Mm -hmm. And I give them the direct message that you better stop it. Don't do it. Right. All right, Andy. I'm going to run, brother. But thank you so yep. much for coming and being my guest. I really appreciate you. I wish you massive success in whatever you're doing. And keep me updated about what's going on with the. Oh, I'm with the just place. a frothy part of the, uh, Biden. the what? Biden. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. And, yeah. All right. Have a great evening. I love you. I love you, Jeff. I love you, you too. The Andy. Best. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Love you too. And good night. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. All right, guys. So we're about over. But once we. Before we go, I think Mika wants to say hello to everybody. So let me find Mika real quick.
All right, Mika has her Sunday dress on for uh, for Easter tomorrow. She's caught in my cables here. There she is. Let's see if everybody can see her dress. I guess she's, I don't know if she's a little grouchy or what's going on with her. I guess you can't see her, you can't see her dress that well. I can turn her the right way. Maybe you can see her. I guess I woke her up. She was just laying down, relaxing, and now she's, she's there. All right, guys. So again, um, tomorrow's guest is a guest that encountered Jesus. So I think it's a perfect day. I thought about it, you know, a perfect video for tomorrow since it is Easter to have one that's, you know, Christian related. So I think that'll be a cool video for you guys. I hope you enjoy that one. The next one after that is I've got another NDE that will be posting up for you Monday. I've got to record an NDE Monday night with somebody in, I think it's either Australia or New Zealand. Let's see what else I have. A UFO guest I'm recording on Tuesday. An NDE on Wednesday. I didn't write down my notes on Thursday. Rob Gutierrez, who chat the ET Whisper, I'm supposed to meet with him again on Friday. Not again, but we'll finally meet. And then another um, NDE. So I have quite a few NDEs next week. And um, that's it for that. So I will hope you guys will enjoy. Oh, yeah, I've got to thank Shira. Shira, thank you very much for the super thanks. Let me get back to that. Let me see if I can put that there. Where was that? Oh, she gave me a thumbs up and thank you for the super thanks. And I'm going to put it in the chat. If you guys would do me a big favor. And after I finish this video, go check out my new short that I put up. Where is this? Kind of back and forth all over the place. There's a video to the new shorts video that I put up today, and it's got some really cool visuals up there. So I hope you guys will like that. And um, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for coming on Saturday night. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed their, our program tonight. We will see you guys live next Saturday. And um, I hope you all, if you celebrate, I hope you have a happy Easter tomorrow, and I hope you have an amazing time with your families. And um, we love you guys. We appreciate you. God bless you. And good night. And say bye, Mika.